Hello, thank you for having me here today. My name is Celine Xu. I'm a lead data scientist of H&M Group. Thanks Databricks for inviting me here for the 2022 summit. I'm also a fashion lover. My big dream is to make machine learning more closer to fashion and let fashion understand how machine learning is work to generate value. All HM Group's global scaled ML products are currently used Databricks platform. Today's topic is about when machine learning meets fashion. It's about my thinkings from all the previous projects I had. I hope you can get some inspiration from it. First, I would love to give you a brief introduction of H&M Group, which founded in 1947. Till now, it has been 75 years. I believe everyone knows H&M as a fashion brand, but H&M is just one of 12 brands belong to H&M Group. It also includes Kors, Weekend, Monkey, H&M Home, Another Story, and so on and so forth. The organization I sit in called Business Tech. It has been found three years ago, aimed to be the backbone of digitalization of the whole H&M Group. We grow really fast. Till now, we have a team of more than 150 machine learning engineers and data scientists, more than 30 products, and six out of them are globally scaled. Presentation, I want to cover the three following areas. First, to talk about the conflicts between fashion and machine learning. The second, the limitation of current image recognition I observe from previous projects. Last but not least, what area the machine learning future development should focus on for the personal style recommendation. So, if we want to understand the conflicts between fashion and machine learning, then we first need to understand the definition of fashion and how machine learning works. So, what's the essence of the fashion? According to Wikipedia, Fashion is a form of self-expression and community belonging. It's including clothing, footwear, lifestyle, accessory, makeup, hairstyle, or even a posture. And the fashion trends is a look defined by fashion industry. Always change. Always different. Compared to other industries' product, for example, food, grocery, or music, the product in fashion are more vague and hard to classify in a constant, standardized description along the timeline. For simplicity, our presentation will only focus on ready-to-wear garment fashion Let's industry. Let's talk about machine learning. What is the machine learning? Fundamentally, it's, a building, uh, it's about building a statistic model based on sample data in order to make prediction or support the decisions. All of that based on an assumption that history will happen again under a certain context, which means machine learning is really good at finding something unchanged in the past data or in the sample data and applying the same rule to the test data or future data to make a decision, which means they calculate the certainty of the certain context. At the same time, because machine learning learn from the sample data, the result will highly biased on the sample data the people choose. As I mentioned, since fashion is always about change, I'm, but machine learning is always to finding unchange. I make those two tables to compare each fact to make the point more clear. Fashion is about change. The designer finding inspiration from a single instance from multiple aspects including culture, lifestyle, personal preference, or even a single accident. It's really hard to identify and predict. However, machine learning is good at to learn from massive data to find the root of unchanged things, to calculate the probability will happen again, which is about the certainty. Second, fashion style is really vague. However, 
machine learning model need to have a clear standardized rule to translate the business problem into a statistic model. Fashion is about feeling, and the feeling is change and subjective. Fashion is more about a story, and the definition change along the time. But machine learning is about formula. It's about apply the same logic and concept for future data set and make prediction. Last but not least, fashion trends, as we know, is defined by sm small group of people. Then, why we need to look at the mass market to understand the real trends where it goes? It should be easier to look at who actually steering and decide the trends and make a prediction. However, the machine learning is really good at to learn from massive data, to understand the common rule from the big sample. So, is that appropriate to use machine learning actually to predict fashion trends? The question you may want to ask yourself if you still want to do fashion forecasting by machine learning. First is where you actually get your data source to treat the model. Since the data source is really Define the bias of the model. Where do you choose the data source is critical. Whether or not you choose from social media, which is messy, including everything, and not standardized tagging, or you're actually choosing the fashion blogger or the uh, Vogue or Ella fashion magazine's uh, picture, which have more professional description of each feature. And the second one is you need to aware of how your image data be labeled and who labels data. As I mentioned the two example previously, whether or not it's a customer labeled data, it really have their personal inter interpretation. At the same time, it also involved some pop culture terminology. And if that is labeled by a fashion expert or designer, they have standardized a way to telling the same item a different name and how we mapping those together. Sometimes, even worse, it is your engineering team to label the picture. For example, if we talk about a silhouette, we're only talking about the A shape, H shape, but no Nobody actually cared about what the detail about that. So it's really critical to understand who actually labeled the data and how to use it. The third thing is you need to think about, can you actually do something after you knowing the forecasting? For example, if your supply planning area is about six months and you can get the prediction from certain fashion trends from social media is only last at most three months. Whether or not you can use that data affect your design or you should use your data in another way. Last but not least, I think this is most important things. Sometimes we can use someone else, for example, fashion expert or look at the fashion magazine or even involve the customer co-creating to forecast the fashion trends instead of using machine learning. It may have more accuracy and low cost and more engagement. Then what? What we learn from this section? So since machine learning is always about learn from the history, what is not change? So what kind of things in the fashion is not changing? As we mentioned, fashion is self-expression, is about Community engagement is about the value people believe in and want to believe in. Then those things compared to fashion trends is more stable. Why not use machine learning to classify those things or say classify which community the people belonging to instead of actually forecasting a fashion trends within each style. Second, since machine learning is really good at to summarize common feature of the period, why we need to focus on identify single, simple um, 
delicately change for the specific garment feature instead of actually find the common、um, feature within the certain time period. One of the、um, story is about、uh, saying.、Um, Fashion will come back every ten years, but no one actually doing that experiment to summarize what kind of feature in fashion actually come back in ten years, in what way. And I think、uh, machine learning will be more good at doing that, and it will be fantastic if we find that more specifically. Last but not least, it's about how we look at the right place and right time and for the right purpose. As I mentioned. If we cannot affect our designer、uh, by using social media data, is any other thing we can do? Whether or not we can actually learn from social media data about pop culture terminology of certain feature on the clothes and mapping that terminology into such a function in the web shopping and support customer to find something relevant or similar from our existing. Product is better. Let's move to the next section, which is the limitations of current image recognition capability, which I observe from、uh, my current projects. First, if we really want to understand the limitation, then we need to understand how the computer see the picture different from the human eyes. Pixel are the smallest element present and screen, and the lowest level of analysis in computer vision. A pixel is a character raised by the following attribute. One is the position of a grade. The other is one more measurement related to intense intensity of light, a grayscale from zero to two hundred fifty-five. As you see, this graph is about six multiple seven metrics, and it transfers this picture E to an metrics with numerical. When we have more complex picture, like color picture, we will have those three different metrics together, which represent. R G B value differently, red, green, and blue value. Then, in the summary, if we want to transfer a、um, complex picture to and something we can calculate, it's through either encoding or embedding method, and the transfer the image to a long image vector represent ready to calculate. Then, how the machine actually tell the difference between the picture, which the machine actually calculate the distance between the matching image vectors. There are also multiple way of define the distance. For example, Euclidean distance, cosine distance, Hamming distance. It really depend on the task. What we want to identify. The point here is, not like human machine recognize the same item as a different object in the image if the pixel representative vectors are different. It's due to first the quality of the、uh, image, second how we transfer this image to an. Certain long vectors, and also how we define the distance and how we calculate the difference. Let's see some more intuitive examples as follow. Under some situation, even though that that is the same dress, the machine still recognize as a different product. First, is the same dress on different lights. They're showing different hue, different color, and different intensity. As a pixel. Second, the machine is really hard to matching or recognize the same dress if the dress just hang without a model before a back background or wear by a model. 
do a pose before a colorful background. Even if we actually shoot the photo of the same dress from different angle, because the intensity of the color of the line difference in the pixel, the machine will recognize differently. More interestingly, if we can, if a dress can be well differently, or if a model wear the same dress take the different pose to get the picture, the machine will recognize the dress differently. If a dress have a different size, fit in different model, the machine will recognize the dress more often differently. Last, if a certain piece of garment have different combination of the other accessory or garment well differently, Normally, the machine will recognize differently, which means we're not able to match they are the same piece of item. In the end, let's move to the final section. What could be the future development focus of machine learning image recognition in the personal style area? Everyone or say consulting firm always believe personalized recommendation will help the company generate more value. How? Normally, we do the recommendation are we using historical records, we scoring those items and based on the style tag of single item to recommend what relevant to the customer. But is that an effective way? I say no. Because there are two facts. First, the same item can have multiple style according to the definition, and the machine cannot really recognize or matching they are the similar product. It's always about the combination. As the graph saying, a small white t-shirt, if you match with different garment, accessory, footwell, you actually can create different style. And also, when you compare with different color, you matching different color palette, it can or may not please your eyes. Then what? Then the image recognition should focus on identify multiple fashion object within the single picture from the official expert from fashion instead of only matching the single item from the street style to the product category. And also to understand the combination of the garments, the relation between the style, instead of classify individual item into different style. The second fact is the same person can have multiple style. Why we restrict a single customer in the same style. What we really want is encourage them to try out different style. And if that is the style they are not familiar with, we can give them the guidance and support to find the best first try ever for the first look. What the takeaway are, please don't use machine learning for predictive fashion. It may not work but use machine learning to predict something not change, which is customer social belonging. Do not think the image recognition will solve everything. Beware of the limitations of image recognition and focus on identifying multiple objects in the same picture and my mapping out the relationship between the combination and styles instead of individual item. The last, do not limit it. Classify your customer into single fashion style, but encourage them to try different styles and support them with professional guidance and search, which can actually get the win-win situation. Thank you.